Now that is how we start a five-game road trip. If you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, a 5-1 whomping over the Seattle Kraken. And with the Leafs W tonight, they improve now to 37-15-8 on the season. And they have now won three consecutive hockey games. And like I mentioned, a really good start to the road trip, which then features Edmonton on Wednesday, Calgary on Thursday, Vancouver Saturday, and then I can't remember the date, but you play New Jersey in New Jersey. And they just got Timo Meyer. So, wow. That's going to be a hell of a game. But they started off on a really good note today. A really solid W, albeit they didn't start on time. Less than four minutes in, some pretty bad defensive coverage from the Leafs, and Vince Dunn buries it. Didn't like Riley, kind of just a little foo-foo stick in the middle of the ice, uh, whiffing on, they passed it across, he tried to get in front of it, couldn't. And then Brody's too late to get down to block the shot, and he beats Samson off far side, and the Leafs are down 1-0, 347 into the hockey game. Just over a minute afterwards, though, Geo coming down from the right boards, or from the, right, from the left point, Right? To the left boards. There we go. And Ryan O'Reilly has Justin Schultz all up in his grill right in front of the net. So he crosses in front of Philip Grubauer. And as he does, Geo fires it on and it beats Grubauer five hole. Nylander and Lilligren have assists in the goal at 4.58 of the first period. And we are tied at one. Also, shout out Geo for becoming the most... You know, most block shots in NHL history, even though the stat was recorded since 2005, 6, doesn't really mean much, but it's done and over with. You don't have to talk about it anymore. Less than three minutes after that, Justin Hall has the puck back at the point. A slap pass to the back post. Or I guess it was, no, it wasn't really the back post, but it hit John Tavares, who's right in front of the net, but to the left side of it, and he just redirects it in. Beautiful shot pass from uh, Justin Hall. Had everyone baiting on it. Had Philip Grubauer baited. And we have the lead 2-1. Tavares from Hall and Nylander at 7.06 of the first period. Five minutes after that, the fellas weren't done. Mitch Marner doing Mitch Marner things behind the offensive zone net. And he centers it to Timothy Lilligren and he buries it. Beautiful for release from Lilligren. Doesn't stop the pass and then take the shot. No, it's all in one motion. Bang, one timer. And that's a tough shot as a right shot. That's a tough one coming from the, what would that be? If you're facing the net, it's the left side of the net behind the boards. Coming across the ice, you had a one-timer and get it on the net. And it was in a perfect spot. Beautiful shot from Timothy Lilligren. Lilligren from Martyr and Bunting at 12.51. And the Leafs got a 3-1 lead. After that wild start to the game where you give up the goal in the first four minutes, you have a 3-1 lead less than 13 into the game. And that is how the first period does end. The Leafs outshoot the Kraken 20 to 7 in the first. But you gotta keep going. And in the second period, it's 413 into the period. Kind of a cluster, a weird thing going on in front. I can't remember how exactly Matthews got to the puck, but he smacks it out of midair. And it goes in. And it's a huge sigh of relief. The arms go up in the air for Matthews. He definitely needed that. Goal number 27 on the season for him. And the Leafs have a 4-1 lead. Matthews from Bunting and Marner at 4-13 of the second period. But in that second period, they dominate zone time. Samsonov was flying all over the place trying to make big save after big save. And he made some phenomenal ones. 15-4 in shots in favor of Seattle. But it doesn't matter because the Leafs won the period 1-0. We head to the third. Leafs up 4-1. Just kind of, let's, let, let's settle down here, play solid defense, and close the game strong. Well, the Leafs only allow five shots in the third period. Five. They only allow, they only get nine shots, but they outshoot them when they're down three and need the goals. Really sound defensive third period for the Leafs. But hang on! Less than eight minutes to go. Seattle turns the puck over in the neutral zone Bunting picks it up gives it to Marner Munter, Marner back to Bunting back to Marner and Marner to the back post to Austin Matthews oh baby that was sexy tic-tac-toe between Bunting Marner and Matthews to the back of the net and those guys had a big night in the office look they only had you know a couple goals on the line 
but I thought they just dominated their line today. They they were all over the place and they dominated the Seattle Kraken in this one. Matthews from Marner and Bunting at 1231. Uh, Matthews has two goals, his 28th on the season, and his third multi-goal game of the year. And the Leafs cruise to the 5-1 win. Now before we go into the stats, ladies and gentlemen, I know we're all keeping an eye on the Tampa Bay Lightning. And if you're looking at the standings or the scores after the game, and you see the Tampa Bay Lightning lost a 7-3 to the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins tonight. Let me also run this by you. Tampa had a 2-1 lead after the first period, okay? It was 2-2 with five minutes to go in the second period. Pittsburgh then goes on to score five goals in five minutes in the second period. And again, let me let me let me keep hammering home this. With five minutes left in the second period. It was a 2-2 game. At the end of the second period, it was 7-2 Pittsburgh. If those were if those were the Leafs, it would be a damn catastrophe. We'd be talking about blowing the team. Okay, we wouldn't be talking about that, obviously, but we'd be losing our mind. And it's great for Leaf fans because with the Tampa loss in regulation and the Leafs win in regular well, the win period. You're now four up on Tampa, and they only have the one game in hand. So that's a really good shape. The Leafs have found themselves in decent... Remember when they were, we were like three points behind us with like three games in hand, and we're like, oh God, this is ugly. Now you're four up with only one game in hand. So the Leafs have done their job. You, all you can do is focus on yourself. You go out there, you win your hockey games, everything will fall in line itself. Let's get to these player stats. Samsonov, Outstanding. And I loved it tonight because I thought positionally he looked really sound in the net. When he needed to fly around and make a big save, he did. And it's a road game, and he was very good. One goal, 27 shots for Ilya Samsonov tonight. I I thought he was very, very good. I know I've said it a few times, and I'll say it again, but he was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, especially in that second period when it was only 3-1, right? And if they score a goal, it's only a one-goal game. Who knows what happens? But then Matthews gets that early third, second period goal to make it 4-1. But even then, they dominated the rest of the second period and it could have flipped the switch. But it, he makes a lot of big saves and it saves 4-1. Great game from him. Like I mentioned, that Matthews line was dominant. Excuse me. Matthews had two goals. Timothy Lilligren had a goal and an assist. Mitch Marner with three apples. Dude, just had five assists against Buffalo. Buffalo? No. Was it Buffalo? Was it Buffalo had five assists? I think it was, yeah, it was Buffalo. He had five assists. He has three tonight. Bunting has two assists. Nylander has two assists. The fellas got it done tonight. Shots on goal for the game are 33-27 in favor of the Leafs. Special teams-wise, they were 0 for 1. Or we were 0 for 1 on our power play. And they were 0 for 2. So the Leafs penalty killing... Continuing to do some great things. All right. We move on to the next one. <clears throat> against a team that thrives on the power play. So keep them off the power play. And good things should happen. The Edmonton Oilers. The Leafs go to Edmonton State on the Oilers on Wednesday night. It's an 8 p.m. puck drop. And I don't want to say this is a big test because let's be real. That division sucks. And Edmonton quite possibly is going to win that division. Which makes me want to puke. Because if we were in that division, we'd be up like 10 points or so. Hold on. With the the W tonight, the Leafs have 82 points. Who's leading that division? Vegas has 76. We would be uh, 6 points in first place if we were in that division. The other division, (laughs) the, the Central Division has 74. God, the Western Conference is so bad. And of course, the Leafs are in the East. All right. But anyways, you take on Edmonton. Connor McDavid putting up stupid numbers. Leon Dreisaitl having a great season. Zach Hyman, of course, having a great year. But uh, let's see what the Leafs can do. They seem to be able to play up to their opponents. But that game on Wednesday is going to be a very big test for this squad. Get the best player in hockey on the other side. All right. So you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and the W today, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, smack the like button. I do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already comment down below your thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like? 
from today's game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Twitter and Instagram links are down below. So follow up, Sammy DM, guys. Do that great stuff. Do it all. Discord link is down below as well. So guys, follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys uh, Jay's edition Wednesday as we'll be doing the kind of the spring training weekly recap. Uh, for the Raptors, they're back in action on Tuesdays. They host Chicago Bulls. That's Scotia Bank Arena at 7.30. And as for the Leafs, they're back in action on Wednesday at 8 p.m. as they're in Edmonton taking on Connor McDavid, the Edmonton Oilers. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and the win today. We'll talk to you guys then.